A very common type of chemical reaction is called a redox reaction or an oxidation reduction reaction. Um, so in these redox reactions or oxidation reduction reactions, there is a transfer of electrons that occur um, from one element to the other. So there's the reason they're called oxidation and reduction reactions are that those two processes, oxidation and reduction, basically occur at the same time within components of the reaction. So oxidation is losing electrons from an atom, and then reduction, reduction is going to be the gaining of electrons. So one component is going to lose electrons, and the other component is going to gain electrons. So that oxidation and reduction occurs simultaneously um, within the reaction. So if you see here, it says a redox reaction always has two components, one that's oxidized and one that's going to be reduced. Um, probably more accurate to say it always has at least two components. It can have more, um, but there's always going to be a component that's oxidized and one that's going to be reduced. So here's an example um, of a reaction here. So if you look at this, and this is actually something our um, students do in a general chemistry lab, but if you have copper ions, so copper two plus ions in a solution. So these are copper ions in a solution of water. You can see the water floating around. And then you put in a zinc strip, so just a piece of zinc metal. And you take that metal and you kind of stir it and you stir it and you stir it. What happens is notice over here it says that you have solid zinc. And over here you have Zn2 plus. Well, what happens is that the zinc becomes ionized, and it goes from a solid to an ion that's basically soluble in solution. Again, you still are in this kind of water um, uh, solvent over here. And on the other hand, your copper uh, goes from an ion to, over here, a solid that's in solution. So you actually form a copper solid from the zinc, and this is due to a redox reaction. So um, in this case, I'm going to write the equation down here. You go from copper 2 plus reacts with zinc, and it forms copper solid plus Zn2 plus. And what we can say here is if you notice uh, it says zinc loses two electrons because what happens is your solid zinc, this is where it says Zn with a solid. Remember, if it doesn't show a charge, it means it has zero charge. So I'm actually going to write, just even though you no don't normally write it, a little zero there. So it's going from a charge of zero to two plus. So we're always gaining or losing electrons. So we're not gaining or losing protons. You're always gaining or losing electrons. So in order to go from a charge of zero to a charge of two plus, that means you have to lose two electrons. So by losing an electron, you're going to get your charge is going to become more positive. So zinc is going to lose two electrons. So zinc to Zn2 plus, we're going to lose electrons. And then from going from copper 2 plus to copper solid, and again, that copper that is um, over here has a charge of zero on it. It's going from 2 plus to zero. So copper is going to gain those two electrons. So the electrons that zinc lost are basically transferred to, to the copper 2 plus ion, and it goes from copper 2 plus when it gains one electron, it becomes a little bit more negative, so it goes to copper 1 plus. Then when it gains a second electron, it goes to copper zero, which is going to be this copper solid over here. So copper gains two electrons. So from Cu2 plus over to Cu, that's going to be gaining. All right. In the general way I remember kind of oxidation and reaction is by using this mnemonic device here, the oil rig. Oxidation is losing, reduction is gaining. So, and if you notice here, it says oxidation is lost, and I have in parentheses of electrons or of a hydrogen. Um, and I put that on there because later on in the semester, we're going to talk about s some other redox reactions, particularly when we talk about sugars, um, and also a little bit maybe in a different part of the organic chemistry section, where there's also going to be gaining or losing of hydrogens. 
which is really kind of an electron, but we'll talk about that later. But if you remember both of them, it'll help you down the road. But either way, um, oxidation is losing, reduction is gaining. So copper gains two electrons. Since copper is gaining the two electrons, that's being reduced. So copper is reduced, and then the copper two plus, I should say, the copper ion is reduced. And then the Zn, the metal zinc, loses the electron, so it's going to be oxidized. Right? Whenever we refer to things as either oxidized or reduced, we're always talking about the reactants. So you always define the reactants as either oxidized or reduced. Okay. We can take this reaction and actually break it down a little bit more into what's referred to as half reactions. So we can look at... Um, what is happening in the oxidation part of this reaction? Well, in the oxidation part of the reaction, zinc is losing two electrons and it's going to zinc two plus. So we can write that this way in what we refer to as a half reaction. So losing of electrons in a half reaction basically say zinc reacts to form Zn two plus, the zinc ion, plus two electrons, right? Those electrons are lost from this original zinc and they're just kind of out there. Well, we know they don't stay out there. What happens is those electrons are transferred down here into the reduction half reaction and then reduction is gaining, right? Oil rig, reduction is gaining. And what happens here is that your Cu2+, plus, your copper ion, gains, so plus two electrons, forms your regular copper, right? The Cu. So again, you can write these, you can look at the whole entire reaction kind of up here, right? And you can also break that down and look at the half reactions, kind of breaking it down a little bit simpler like we have on the bottom. Um, to make the terminology a little more confusing, and don't blame me for this, this is just, uh, I didn't make this up, but we can say that a compound that is oxidized, like zinc, so zinc we say is oxidized, right, to go to zinc 2+. plus. It, it, um, it's going to be oxidized, it's going to lose electrons, right? So zinc is oxidized, loses electrons. We can also say it acts as a reducing agent because it causes something else to be reduced. So basically, you can read through the words on the slide and basically it says something that is oxidized is also a reducing agent. Something that is reduced is also an oxidizing agent. So whatever is oxidized, so zinc, is also going to be the reducing agent, meaning it causes something else to be reduced. Copper, because it's reduced, that means it's going to cause something else to become oxidized, so it's going to be an oxidizing agent. So again, two different words for that. And again, always looking at the reactants whenever we're talking about on what is going to be oxidized, reduced, or what's going to be a reducing agent or an oxidizing agent. Okay, so here is another example of a redox reaction. This one looks a little bit different, so kind of look at the equation down here where we say 4 iron plus 3O2 goes to 2 um, iron 3 oxide, Fe2O3. So one thing you'll notice here is you don't see any charges, right? In the previous one, it's kind of almost easy to see that electrons were being moved because you could see that change of charges. Well, here we don't see anything, right? Iron, as it says down here, is neutral, right? No charge. Oxygen is neutral. The trick to this one is that Fe2O3, iron oxide, iron 3 oxide, um, is an ionic compound ionic compound. So if you remember, an ionic compound is when you have a metal, iron, and a non-metal, oxygen, right? So you have iron, and you have oxygen, you have a metal and a non-metal, that defines it as an ionic compound. Now within an ionic compound, that means you have two different ions. You have Fe3 plus and O2 minus. So the way that we know that it's Fe3+, plus, because iron is a transition metal, which means it can have a variable charge. However, we know that oxygen is always going to be minus 2, so we can easily define this minus 2 for oxygen. We know there's three of them, so the total is going to be minus 6. Since there's two irons, have to, 
total up to plus six, that means each one is going to be plus three. Okay, so again, that's a review for talking about um, ionic compounds like we did back in chapter three. So, how do we know that this is a redox reaction? Well, iron went from zero to plus three. So in order for that to happen, it had to lose electrons. Right? If it goes from zero to plus three, it lost electrons. Oxygen went from neutral to minus two. That means it had to gain electrons. So in this case, iron is oxidized, or you could say iron is the reducing agent. And you can say oxygen is reduced, or you could say that oxygen is the oxidizing agent. Oxygen is always going to be an oxidizing agent, by the way. It causes something else to be oxidized. That's part of like why the whole name is what it is, because oxygen uh, causes things to be oxidized. Okay, so again, this is just another example. In this case, you're looking at ionic compounds to determine the charges to be able to determine what's oxidized and what is reduced. All right, so here's an example, um, which is oxidized and which is reduced. We have 2 lithium plus I2, so iodine goes to 2 lithium iodide. Um, I'm going to go ahead on here and write the charges. So lithium is 0 because it's not written. This is 0 because it's not written. And overall, LiI is going to be 0, but that's, again, an ionic compound. So iodine is a halogen, so it's going to be minus 1. And lithium is in group 1, so it's going to be plus 1. So now, knowing that, we can say, okay, lithium goes from 0 to plus 1, right? So it goes from 0 over to plus 1. In order to do that, what has to happen? Well, it's going to lose an electron. So it's going to lose electron. E minus is my symbol for an electron. Iodine goes from 0 to negative 1. So if you're going from 0 down to negative 1, that's going to gain an electron. All right? So, which is oxidized? Well, oxidized, and that's also, we can also call that the reducing agent. So oxidize is losing. That's the oil part of our oil rig. So we would say that Li, lithium, is oxidized. What is reduced, or the oxidizing agent, well, that's going to be I2, right? That's going to be the one that goes from 0 to negative 1, all right? So oxidation and reduction, gaining and losing of electrons, um, make sure you're able to pick out whenever you have an ionic compound. Be able to break it into the charges like we did back in chapter 3.